Hello everybody and welcome to this part where we're going to talk about the types of hypertrophy that you might get once you've started resistance training. So there's two main types of hypertrophy, okay? So the first is known as myofibrillar hypertrophy, okay? Myofibrillar hypertrophy. And I'm just going to put uh, HT as an abbreviation for hypertrophy. Uh, and the second is known as sarcoplasmic sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and this is also known as cell swelling okay this is what you feel when you go to the gym and you have the muscle pump okay uh, so this is the, the kind of pumped feeling that we get when we're actually doing the session now the myofibrillar hypertrophy is the one that's actually related to an increase in strength, okay? Now, just because it's quite interesting to know about this, myofibrillar hypertrophy is what you would get if you are doing um, uh, power-based sports, so if you're an Olympic weightlifter or you're a power lifter and you're focusing on uh, pure strength, pure muscle strength, then myofibrillar hypertrophy is what you are uh, uh, experiencing in, with the training loads uh, and the training volume that you would do. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, on the other hand, is what you would ex experience if you're, in a, if you're a bodybuilder. So that's not to say that bodybuilders aren't strong. They, they, they can be, but generally the, the bodybuilders are not as strong as power lifters or Olympic weightlifters and that's you know a known fact. Uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is when you get the attraction of extracellular water into the sarcoplasm, so into uh, the, um, uh, the muscle cell itself uh, and then you start to get uh, a, a, an increase in uh, the, uh, the swelling of the cell cell starts as well you start to get an increase in size that way but the the increase in size is not due to an increase in myofibrils and remember it's the myofibrils that contain the sarcomeres that cause um, uh, stronger contractions so on the one hand you've got an increase in size uh, but it's purely down to having more uh, extracellular water within the sarcoplasm. So if we first talk about uh, myofibrillar hypertrophy, now in the other video we talk about the, the activation of uh, uh, satellite cells. Now, um, satellite cells essentially cause the increase in the, the muscle fibers. So if I, I'm just going to uh, wipe the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy part out. We'll talk about that in just a moment and we'll focus on the myofibrillar hypertrophy. So imagine you go to the gym, you do uh, you know, a resistance training program, uh, you're lifting quite heavy weights, multiple sets, you're doing uh, you know, exercises which involve the large muscle groups. Um, so for example, the squats where you're utilizing approximately 200 muscles. What you're actually going to have is uh, damage occurring from the eccentric part of that movement. So the eccentric part is when you're lengthening the muscle under tension, and that can cause significant damage to uh, the titin, actin, and myosin, uh, the proteins. Uh, so you start to get damage to the myofibers. And remember, we, when you get damage to the myofibers, you get activation of the satellite cells, which then uh, cause a repair of the, uh, the muscle fiber. So if we imagine that with myofibers, fibrillar hypertrophy, you've got this damage to the muscle and the response of the muscle is to add more myofibrils or to grow them at least in parallel. So you have a parallel um, uh, addition of the myofibers, okay? So you increase the cross-sectional area. So if you imagine that you've got a muscle and you've got the cross-sectional area here, okay? sectional area, you've got your myofibrils uh, arranged into um, uh, these bundles. This is a cross-sectional view of the muscle. The difference between this muscle here and this slightly smaller one is that with this muscle here, the myofibers are being added to um, in, in, in uh, parallel to each other. So you're having, uh, in the, in, you know, there is evidence for muscle fiber hyperplasia as well. Not strong evidence, but there is. So you get an addition of sarcomeres uh, in parallel. So parallel addition of sarcomeres. 
okay and that leads to an increase in the cross-sectional area therefore you're going to get a stronger muscle contraction now you can in certain sports have um, muscle fiber or myofibers or sarcomeres sorry i should be saying really Sar sarcomeres um, added uh, at the ends as well okay so you're having them added in series so we'll just put here Sarcomeres are added in series, so it makes the muscle uh, slightly longer. Now, when would this be useful? Well, if you're doing sports where you need to produce uh, maximum force with uh, the, the muscle in a very large um, ranges of motion, so for example, 100 meter sprinting, where you're really um, uh, applying, producing and applying force over the full uh, range of uh, motion for that muscle, for that joint, then you would have uh, some addition of um, uh, uh, sarcomeres that are happening in series. But generally when you go to the gym and you perform resistance training and you're focusing on uh, uh, improving your strength, then you're having parallel addition of the sarcomeres and that is myofibrillar hypertrophy so it's uh, you know the accumulation of um, uh, more myofibers and this is dependent upon having greater protein synthesis uh, relative to the protein breakdown because remember the, the the muscle is made up of actin myosin titin and other important proteins uh, and those proteins require amino acids uh, so we need to have abundant amounts of protein within the body uh, of course there are limits to that and we'll talk about that shortly uh, but it's the protein which will then be utilized the amino acids uh, to produce the, the, the uh, increase in size to the myofibers once they're damaged so that is myofibrillar hypertrophy okay so this is what you would experience if you were uh, you know a strength athlete um, you know, so we can talk about Olympic weightlifting, we can talk about powerlifting, we can talk about uh, the triple jump, the long jump, um, you know, the, the, we could talk about uh, gymnastics, you know, sports where you, you, where you actually need quite a lot of uh, muscle strength, uh, you would have uh, myofibrillar uh, hypertrophy actually occurring. Now, the other type of hypertrophy I talked about was sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Okay, now sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, I'll, I'll draw this out. Okay, so you've got a muscle fiber here, okay? And then you've got the, a group of uh, myofibers, all the myofibrils collected together. Okay, so this is the same muscle, for, uh, a cross section of the muscle, okay? So these are the kind of myofibers, okay, the muscle fibers grouped together in bundles as they are in our, in our uh, it, you know, within a specific muscle. The difference between the size here is that in the, when we look at this muscle here, this has got an increased amount of extracellular water, okay? So extracellular water basically means the water that was on the outside of the muscle cell has now migrated inwards. Why has that happened? Now it's quite simple, when, when you have sarcoplasmic hypertrophy it usually occurs when you're doing uh, exercises which require 8 to 12 repetitions. Okay, so or once you do 8 to 12 repetitions you start to create metabolic stress within um, within the muscle you start to produce lactate you start to produce hydrogen uh, and that causes the migration of extracellular water into the sarcoplasm so i'm just going to label this here this is the sarcoplasm and once you do once you have like if i move across here so 8 to 12 reps equals increased metabolic stress within the muscle okay so you're going to have what does that mean i'll put that in brackets increased lactate uh, at hydrogen which is why when you do 8 to 12 reps if you've selected the right weight by the time you get to the rep number 10 or 11 you really start to fatigue and you you go to you start to fail with the movement and have to stop so increase in hydrogen ions this causes so this 
causes extracellular water to move into the sarcoplasm and then you start to get expansion of the muscle cell uh, and you get that muscle pump that we feel when we go to the gym. So whatever exercise you do, you get this temporary increase in the muscle, in, in the, in the um, um, s s uh, swelling of the cell. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is also known as cell swelling. Okay, now in certain muscle fibers, for example, in fast twitch muscle fibers, so I'll just put here fast twitch muscle fibers, fast twitch muscle fibers, they have something called, well, they have these channels, water channels called aquaporin 4. Okay, so they have an increased amount of aquaporin 4 which facilitates extracellular water into the sarcoplasm. Okay, so increased amounts of aquaporin 4. Now, when we talk about myofibrillar hypertrophy, you normally get that when you're doing, um, you know, repetitions that are very high weight but less than five reps, okay, and you're focusing on uh, developing lots of power and strength to perform the movement. You're using the phosphocreatine energy system, okay, so myofibrillar training that um, kind of increases myofibrillar hypertrophy relies upon uh, the phosphocreatine uh, energy system, okay. We know that the phosphocreatine creating system can only power exercise for very short periods. Now when you do 8 to 12 reps, you use anaerobic glycolysis. Okay, now anybody that's read up about metabolism, energy metabolism, will know that anaerobic glycolysis, and I'm not going to accept the fact that I've spelled that wrong, glycolysis. So anaerobic glycolysis will power m muscle contractions between 8 to 12 reps, okay? So it will get all of our ATP from, from this um, uh, energy pathway here. Now, anaerobic glycolysis is actually responsible for increasing the lactate and hydrogen. It's one of the byproducts of using this uh, to power the muscle contraction. Now, why am I actually telling you this? The reason I'm telling you this is when you do 8 to 12 reps, you increase the amount of glycogen which is in your muscle. Okay, you increase the amount of glycogen which is stored within your muscle. Now, glycogen, one gram of glycogen attracts 3 grams of water. One gram of glycogen attracts 3 grams of water. What water are we talking about? We're talking about extracellular water. So you've got increased glycogen storage within your muscle, so that's going to increase the amount of water that's attracted to the sarcoplasm. You've got uh, anaerobic glycolysis, which is the primary driver of producing ATP within the muscle. That's going to cause increase in lactate and hydrogen. If you've got a predominantly uh, uh, ma uh, predominant makeup of fast twitch muscle fibers, you're gonna have aquaporin 4, which is gonna allow those water molecules to move in to the, the sarcoplasm uh, and cause that cell swelling. And, and this is why bodybuilders will normally go undergo sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So they'll often be, they'll often aesthetically look very good, but not be as strong because they're not having myofibrillar hypertrophy. However, however, it's important to understand that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy still can cause an increase in muscle strength and can cause myofibrillar hypertrophy as well. Okay, let's see how it's going to do that. So. At this point here, there's no increase in muscle strength because you've still got the same amount of um, myofibrils, you just that the, the, the muscle cell has grown larger. However, what happens when you have an expansion of the sarcoplasm or when you have cell swelling, okay, what happens is that the membrane, okay, so remember this is the, the, the muscle membrane, the ultra structure of that muscle membrane starts to stretch. Okay, so this starts to get stre stretching. So the sarcoplasm is pushing on the, the, the membrane of the, the muscle cell, and then what happens is amazing because that's when the satellite cells become activated to, to try and protect the ultrastructure 
of the muscle membrane. Okay, so you're having this stretch of the, uh, the muscle membrane and the satellite cells become activated and they then cause the, in, uh, the um, myonuclei to be donated to the muscle fiber and then you start to get the regeneration of the mus muscle fiber, the mRNA, using the amino acids uh, to code for uh, the new myofibrils, new sarcomeres, and you start to get them being added in parallel. So the point is that when you do training with um, 8 to 12 reps, that does not mean that you're not going to become stronger. You are. You will become stronger. But it's not the same as, it's, it's a longer way round because you can actually train in this range, okay, um, get the cell swelling which you feel as the pump when you do your, your session. There is another reason for why you get muscle pump as well. It's not all down to extracellular water. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but you you do get 8 to 12 reps, you get the cell swelling, uh, but if you don't allow yourself to have adequate progression within your training program, okay, then, there is, uh, then you may not get to the point where you're uh, increasing the cell swelling to the extent where you're damaging the muscle membrane and then stimulating the satellite cells. One other thing that is important to mention that what I've just told you here about the muscle membrane, this is still being researched, okay? This is, the, the, the evidence for this is not uh, as strong as for the myofibrillar hypertrophy, so the adding of the sarcomeres in parallel. This is still a very new area where scientists that are working in this field are trying to understand more about what cell swelling does for increasing uh, the myofibrils and the myofibril size. Uh, so that's why we st there's still limited understanding in terms of what's happening here. Certainly though, it seems plausible that if you have an increase in extracellular water, the body will adapt, the cell will adapt and try to protect itself and will uh, lead to an increase in uh, um, uh, myofibrillar hypertrophy. So that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of the types of hypertrophy. In the next part, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit more about uh, the pathways of uh, uh, muscle hypertrophy and how that mechanical signal is transduced and then causes uh, many of these effects that we see in the muscle. So I'll hopefully see you then.